welcome in. I wanted to give you a sneak peek behind the curtain into my studio setup. If you watched my channel once before, you might already know that my playthrough setup looks something kind of like this, but this just doesn't magically happen. It takes a lot of setup to turn what you see behind me into what you've seen on the screen before. So in this video, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to let you watch me do the setup. And I was gonna kind of talk to you about some cool stuff along the way. I really want to make this video for two main reasons. First of all, I personally love this kind of video. I love it when someone kind of shows you behind the scenes because we're so used to YouTube or TV or movies where we only get to see what they want you to see like through the camera lens. So it's always fun for me to see a video like this where you kind of get to see how everything pulls together. But the other main reason is I'm really excited to show you how I've made the equipment I have work for what I'm doing on the channel. Like when I started the channel, I didn't just go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on really nice equipment. I mean, I researched it. It's really fun to look into this kind of stuff. But I didn't just want to dump tons of money into the channel before I knew it would be something that would actually like make money back as a business. So it's kind of cool to look at like, oh, I got this thing from this time, or I got this item this one time years ago for this, and I'm using that for the channel now. But also right along with that, I want to kind of show you a glimpse into my mind of what I want to do in the future. Like there are some things I can show you like, hey, in the future, I'd love to buy this thing here that would make this part of the process go a lot quicker. All right, that's enough talking for right now. Let me start saying that. I'm really proud of these doors right here. I used to film the first like six months of the channel, which is filmed against this like color of the wall, the paint up there. And it's hard to tell on the camera because the camera can't handle that color of wall. If you look at my really old videos, the color is really wonky because it just confuses it. It's kind of like a weird peachy, I don't know, tan-ish sort of thing. It just really confuses the camera. So I remember mentioning to a friend one day, I was like, I would love to have like a wooden backdrop or a white, something like in the background. So if you ever see like wooden panels or something really big that would work, like let me know. It's like the next day, she was like, I saw this on Facebook Marketplace, people are throwing away closet doors. These are just closet doors, like sliding doors. And they're kind of, not quite the right thing on the back. If it was dark wood, I just would have left this dark wood and done this, but I don't know if you can tell on this, my phone camera, but they're like kind of like blonde wood. So I got them and I had some white paint in the garage and I painted them white and kind of let you know a little bit of the gray show through so there's some texture. So that's my background was free sliding closet doors from a, someone was throwing away on the side of the road. Up next is one of the nicest piece of equipment in my setup. This is a adjustable piano bench. Yeah, I'm a piano player. So I had a really nice bench even before I start the channel. So this is what I sit on, which is actually really nice. I can change my camera height. If I want it to be a little taller, a little shorter, I can just like adjust the bench. It's randomly way nicer than what I need, but I had it sitting in the room right there at the piano. So I might as well use it for this too. All right, we're back to garage sale world right here. This lives in my garage sometimes. Uh, this is a really nicked up, beat up, um, one of the old folding tables with the metal that's like really heavy. Um, I think it was like two bucks or five bucks at a garage sale. And so, yeah, this is pretty sweet. Now, if you watched the channel before, you know the table there is not supposed to be brown. That's the next step. This is literally not exciting at all. It's just a white sheet. I used to film on the white sheet for like a few videos. I just thought it was hard to deal with like the harsh light. If you like a really harsh white light, like your camera sometimes like overexposes things and things are blown out. So I decided the gray sheet was just a little easier on the eyes. The white's not bad. I can see going back to that someday, but I think the gray is just a little easier on the eyes. Clamps! I have to have the clamps. If I don't clamp this down, the entire video, I'm sliding my board, sliding my game around. So clamp the corners. You might be thinking, Ryan, I've never seen those clamps there before. They're always there. But I turn them just out of camera. So yeah, I have some just industrial looking, ugly clamps, because if I don't, the board shakes and moves around the whole time. And it's really bad looking. Okay, for the next part of this setup, I just turned you because I want you to experience this. The next part, it's fun, but it's a little ridiculous. So I have this lamp right here. I have three of these. They're kind of like legit looking lights. Um, don't worry, they're not very expensive. Someone gave me these, my little brother gave me these years ago for something different. Um, but check this out. These are just like, they have an umbrella, but they're basically just holder 
for bulbs. So not like an official light, I just put a bulb in them. But it's kind of nice because the umbrella light diffuses stuff. Um, but the ridiculous part of this is if you have two lamps here, my camera looks terrible. Like the video will look really bad. Like you don't think it's a big deal. You're like, oh, I can deal with a little bad video quality. It looks bad. Then like the board shot, like the shot of the board game, you can't see anything because the camera doesn't have enough light to like accurately show everything on the board. So the, all the shots just look terrible. So really two lights doesn't cut it. So we have stolen a third lamp deal, another lamp. Why not steal another lamp? Most of these lamps that you probably find a trend here are dollar store purchases, not dollar store purchases, like garage sale purchases, so, or rummage sales if you're from other parts of the country. So I'm gonna take all these lamps, put them about at my head height, and try to get six lights on this side of me, and then two on the other, and it'll just make the whole video look better. This is something like peer into my future. I'm able to make money off this channel. Like this takes a lot of work. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but there's like a good five or 10 minutes of my life going up the stairs over there, collecting lamps, unscrewing them, taking the shades off, bringing them down, and then resetting all of them. One of those things that in the future, if I just had one nice light setup to go, boom, light on this side, light on this side, it would make filming a playthrough take like, you know, 20 minutes less of my life. Every time I put out a video, I could save 20, 30 minutes, maybe not dealing with this. And it would just look better too, because these are just, these are just bulbs. These are not like fancy, they're just bulbs. I try to make sure they're all the same color of light temp, but they're just bulbs. They don't look that nice. So better, more powerful lights, but also the convenience of just one light down on each side would be amazing. <laughs> Toddler stool to get some lights up higher. So normally you see something like this. You know what I mean? Can't see the lamps over there. I'm going to, once I get everything kind of set up over here in the place I want it to be, I'll pull those lamps as close as I can possibly get them. Sometimes even on the table itself to me, because again, like I'm dealing with inside and middle of the night kind of stuff filming right now. So there's just not very much light. So if they're not like really close to me and they're not really close to the board. It just, you won't be able to like make out what's on the board. So that is an upgrade for the future. I would love, love to have some nice lighting. Okay. I'm gonna put lights on this side. This side's actually easier. I have the second of the three of these things here. I sometimes put some blue tissue paper, pretty fancy, I know, um, over part of the, the light shade here to basically block some of the light from hitting the, uh, the back walls because the back walls are white, so they're brighter than me, so signs are too bright. So I might do that later, but sometimes I think it's too much work and it's not worth the effort because they fall off and it's just tissue paper, so it tears up. All right, we're gonna set our game out here. It's starting to look official, but there are still a few things left to do. Up next, I wanna show you my video setup. I think this is the part that some of you would be really interested in. So I have over here, I have a camera, a DSLR, um, probably, well, nine years old. I don't remember what year it was made, um, but I have a tripod right here. This is my tripod. If it is completely set up, its maximum height is here, right here. Um, I'm about six feet tall, a little less. So about right here. The problem I have right now, the number one problem I have with playthroughs, which is going to actually really affect Flamecraft, is games like Flamecraft can be big. This is big. This isn't the worst but also there's gonna be cards that go all the way around the border of this, um, it's not a board, mat, rollout mat. And once you do that, this only goes this tall. I can put my camera on this and lean it over the table like this, which I have done for almost all my playthroughs. I tilt the tripod this way. I put, um, <laughs> I actually, let me show you this. You'll really appreciate this. I have to find it real quick, hang on. I have a little, I told you I use really random items. I have a little metal canister with water bottles in it and I put Velcro on it and I hook it to the bottom leg of my tripod to give it weight on the leg sticking back. So then I can lean the tripod forward over the table and have this holding weight onto it and another one of those blue toddler chairs like hooked up right down here like this and holding it down so the leg can't slip out. Um, that's how I get my camera to lean over the table. 
Because if you have your camera sitting back here like this, it's kind of shooting across the side of the table, it's going to be a really skewed angle and you can't get the whole thing in there at once if I do something like this. But my other problem, I, I can lean it, I've been leaning it, um, but the big problem I'm running into right now is games like Flamecraft and I want to do a playthrough of Earth. Like those games are so large. Like this will not cut it. So what I've done before is I get books. I put them under my tripod so my camera ends up being like stacked in the air like this and leaning over. I just hope it doesn't fall the whole time. Um, but sitting on books to give it like a little extra like height, but it's still not big enough. That works for games. Actually, I do that for most games. I do like a Viticulture playthrough. I need that. And Viticulture's boards like this, you have a player board, but we're talking about games like Flamecraft. So I'm going to do something completely different with Flamecraft. My thought is I'm going to use this camera here for my face shots. I'm going to leave this one over here. I'll get it set up later on when I'm like, actually know where I'm going to sit. But I'm going to leave this camera over here and this will be on my face. Um, what the phone is on right now is actually a guitar mic stand. Like, you know, one of those guitar singing, I'll put a picture up here maybe, but one of those singing mics that you like, you know, can move up and down, the guitarist can strum and there's a, a arm that comes out. It's actually hooked up to one of those right now with a little attachment thing, I think made for a bike that's screwed on there. It's actually what's holding the phone right now. So I can't show you because it's literally being held by that. I'm going to attempt to use that and lean it over the board and see if I can get about this high in the air and see if that's enough to capture the game. Now the phone, the reason that might work more than this is first of all, this can't be on the boom arm thing, it's way too heavy. But also the phone um, is a much wider angled lens so it doesn't have to be quite as tall to see more space. And while we're on the topic, this leads to one of the other really big upgrades. I just like envision for the future. Once a channel is making money and I feel comfortable kind of making a bigger purchase, there are two things. They, I don't necessarily need both, but they would both be nice. But either a good tripod that gets a lot taller than this, ideally one that actually has a boom arm, you know, a boom arm that goes up and hangs over like this. That would be ideal. There's ones that can go like seven, eight feet, so it'd be you know, close to the ceiling up there. I could just put the camera up there, be really secure, and it actually knows weight it in the back so it balances out. That, or at the very least, um, a wider angle lens. This is a 28 millimeter lens. There's like, you know, 20s, there's 24s. That would really help too, because that would allow me to not get as tall and then get more of an angle. So that's kind of one of those purchases that down the road would also, again, just really simplify my life instead of like getting the tripod out and then trying to put books and get the right sizes of books to get to the right height. And then it keeps building up higher and higher and higher. And the camera's never fallen yet, but I have this fear that someday it's not going to hold. Don't. Don't, don't tell anyone. But yeah, that's one of my fears. But I would, so I'd love to have a good tripod or that, or kind of along the same line as there are some really nice webcams now that are kind of like camera lenses. And if those were high enough quality, I need to test them out a little bit. But that was high enough quality. That could be another thing maybe to think about. Like I put one of those on a mic stand up in the air. That'd be kind of cool. So that's another big thing in the future that would really simplify my life. Like all the setup I go through, trying to get this thing you'll see in a second, trying to get the right camera angle, something up in the air. Now, one of the newer and most exciting kind of things to talk about, and this is actually something that just recently got upgrades. This is like good news already, is audio. Audio is with lots of the talking style videos, not always the playthroughs, but with the talking, like the top 10 videos, like reviews, Audio is as important or more important than video, right? If you can't hear what I'm saying, if it's not clear, if it's annoying to listen to, it's really tough to listen to it. Um, I'm a musician, so I own this maybe five or 10 years ago. I bought this, this is a Zoom recorder. <laughs> it's a terrible name suddenly because of Zoom, which after COVID became super popular, everyone's Zoom meetings now. But this was the original Zoom. And so now when you Google stuff like for Zoom, it's always like, do you want to connect to a meeting? Like, no, I just want to talk a Google question on my Zoom recorder. It's called a Zoom H4 Handy for H4N Handy Recorder. These are really cool, flexible devices. I got them originally to record piano. Um, when I first started doing videos for the board game channel, I just recorded with these two mics on top here. They're pretty bad. They're not bad mics. They're just I, I and not for the reason I use them. For what I use them for, they're not great mics. I would just kind of set away so it was out of the camera. I would talk and it probably kind of sounds like my phone input does right now. Not the best quality thing ever. Um, over time, eventually I picked up a little lav mic that I hook onto my shirt and this actually hooks up to the zoom as well. So that's why the zoom is, if you happen to want to do the same thing I'm doing right now, like do a channel, uh, these are really flexible devices. It can also hook up to a lav mic. So I did that for a while. 
that's been pretty good. And I will still use the lav mic for lots of situations. Um, the issue with the lav is it is what's called a condenser microphone. So it picks up kind of like your phone does the whole room. But it doesn't leave you much flexibility if you want to record when anyone else is moving in your house. So if you live with other people and someone else is awake and they literally like step upstairs down the hallway, you will hear it pick up. It's crazy how condenser microphones, they have such a wide pickup area. They are so sensitive to sound. So it's really frustrating to so imagine that. Then you try to do a playthrough, it's always pop, pop in all these noises all the time. Like for me, like if I'm just doing this, I don't know if you can hear this, but it's like rub my foot on the ground. Like it'll go shh, 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 shh. So for playthroughs and for like anything I want to do live, it's not ideal. Vision into the future again, I'd love to do some live stuff. Live playthroughs seems so crazy fun. So over Christmas, my dad, thank you, dad, bought me a microphone. It's just like a standard stage mic that you probably have seen a million times in your life to singers on stage scene. This is actually a pretty new experiment. Um, I won't always use this for my channel because again, if I can record a time where no one else is awake, I'll just wear the little lav microphone. But this will allow me to do some live stuff because I can talk into it. Uh, I will show you later by talking to it. And then if I talk into it over here, it'll sound like that because it doesn't pick up like anything. People can be around the house, live stuff is good. And I think for playthroughs, my thought is it's gonna be really nice for a playthrough. So I'll be able to talk into it like this and you won't necessarily hear like all the crunching and scratching if I like kick the table, I don't have to go through and like in the end of this whole process, I have to edit stuff in the computer and edit out all these pops and everything. It's just very time consuming. So this is kind of an exciting new piece of equipment that I'm learning to get used to in using. So I will be doing this today. Oh, I have a really exciting piece of equipment to show you. Be right back. That's me. That 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 wire, that, that plug is how tall I am. So now I come over here, I can set my height with this really easily. It seems dumb, but it's really, really nice. That's a piece of equipment that I will not get rid of. Even if I spend good money, I'm making it, making rich, making all this money. I'll probably always have to have something to see how tall I am. So the lamp is perfect. It's kind of a broken lamp. One more really fun piece of equipment for you. This is a box, but once again, it's not really a box. This is me. I always set that box there to make sure it's not too bright. It's, you can probably actually see this on the camera, but if it's too bright, it shows these lines saying, ah, it's pure white, it's not gonna work. Um, I'm a pretty white person, but the box is whiter than me. So I can put this box here and make sure that I'm not going to be like way too bright or way too dark. So I've literally used this in almost every video. Another piece of equipment that I don't ever perceive getting rid of because it's perfect. It's perfect where I need it for. Okay, so this next part is going to be a little bit of fun. I'm going to take this down. Phone above the table enough. I know you're upside down. We're working on it. We're going to flip this around like this. Isn't this such a nice looking game? Man, such a pretty game. Whoa, almost fell off my chair. If I fall, that's gonna be real bad. All right, so far it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to try to move a few lights a little closer, because the closer the lights are, the better the video is gonna look. I'm doing okay here, so what I'm gonna do now is stop it and go to a different mode in my phone. It almost actually has no distortion, which is kind of cool, because it almost looks like a square. So it's not bad? Okay. You can actually kind of read that if you zoom in too, which is pretty cool. All right, this is to show you, it's not the exact difference of audio, but it's to show you the difference of audio right now. Um, if I'm just talking to my camera audio, this is the difference in this microphone right here. So hopefully the difference would be if I'm talking and, you know, moving stuff around the table and everything like this, there's a camera audio. If I was to cut to this audio, hopefully it sounds a lot better, way better if I'm like moving stuff around the board, it won't be near as, near as poppy, distracting, and require a whole lot less editing. And this is me from a couple days in the future, though I guess it's still the past for you, but it's a future for me editing this video. And the mic here seems to be a big success. I used to a lot of times in playthroughs, go through and do tracks and try to silence things that were playing at the wrong time. And for the most part, this playthrough like cut out lots of that background noise. So that was really, really nice. 
Now, if you're interested in actually watching me play Flamecraft, that's awesome. Because the other day when I filmed this video, I actually did an entire playthrough. I show you how the game works. I actually did an entire playthrough of the game. I just thought if I put them both into one video, first of all, not everyone would be interested in like that long of a video. But also I have a lot of hours of editing ahead of me until the playthrough is ready. So I thought it'd be best just to put this video out now. Then you can look forward to the play the playthrough in about a week or so. I hope you've enjoyed kind of my tour through the studio, kind of seeing how things work, how I do my setup. So yeah, lots of my goals aren't things like, I want better lighting just so I can say I have better lighting or I can spend more money on equipment, but really practical things. Like if you watch a video and I talk about a game and I've taken some videos or pictures of the game, the better lighting will make the game look better. Or if you're watching a playthrough, better lighting will mean you can read the text on the board even better. It'll just be a better experience for the audience or a quicker setup time or quicker teardown time just means I can produce more videos overall if each video doesn't take as long to produce. Thanks so much for hanging out for a little bit, watching the video. This has been a lot of fun to make, a very different than my average video, obviously. Hope you kind of enjoyed. Sneak peek behind the curtain, kind of see what's going on here. And of course, next week or so, watch out for that Flamecraft playthrough. See you then.